Now, as I said, we uh, printed off our lettering using the home computer and then traced and transferred it onto our um, base coated floor cloth using uh, graphite paper. And then we transferred on um, our line drawing. So we have this uh, emblem in the center and we did that with the graphite as well. So once that was complete, then we proceeded to um, fill in all of the lettering and the images using um, lamp black paint and a couple of faux squirrel brushes. So you don't really need a lot of elaborate um, brushes for this project. Uh, a good quality roller to do your base coat and then a couple of good quality brushes. You'll probably need a liner or a rigger and a small flat to do the lettering and a little bit of uh, lamp black paint. And then you're left with nothing but to do the, the actual faux finish itself. So what we've done is we've mixed a faux glaze and I've used um, a fawn and a little bit of white to um, create a sort of linen color. And I've added that in a five to one ratio. So five parts glaze to one part paint. So now the trick is to cover this floor cloth with this glaze and then uh, begin doing the faux finish using the Palmer. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm using a high density foam roller and I'm putting the glaze into a roller tray. And I'll use my high density roller and I'll, I'll make sure I have a generous amount of glaze in it. And we begin by putting, applying a nice generous layer. Now we're going to work right over top of the lettering and the reason for this is that we want to retain that linen appearance even through the painted portion of, of the piece. So now you're going to take your Palmer like so and we're going to um, begin pulling color off so you're going to hold your palmer like this firmly so that the, the flat handle rests in the palm of your hand. And you're going to press firmly into the glaze. And you're going to pull back firmly and then wipe your brush clean. And then you're going to pull again. Now this creates some interesting striations in the glaze itself. And then you come back and you do it again. Now the more times that you do this pull technique, the, the more stria will appear in the, uh, in the glaze. Now the idea is to remove a rather significant amount of the glaze and let some of that base color show through. So you have to press quite firmly. but it does create a nice stria pattern. So once you've done that one section, you're going to apply another layer of glaze. Now you're going to just slightly overlap where your first layer went. So now we have a nice layer of the faux glaze. We're going to clean that Palmer and come back where that lap line is and firmly remove the glaze. Now this doesn't take that long. You can actually continue this quite quickly. This project does not take that long. So remember, apply firm pressure and pull a brush back towards you. Now every once in a while, especially with natural hair brushes, you're going to get a little stray that decides to relocate. Just take the corner of your brush and lift it out. This is such a fun technique to do. Tone on tone, it'll create a nice, um, almost a silk-like look. Um, when it's done tone on tone. So now I think we're ready for the next one. Another layer of glaze. Remember, just slightly overlap. You don't want to have too big of an overlap. So 
now I have glaze in place. I'm going to dry it, clean out that brush a little bit on a clean cloth. And pull. And pull. And every time you pull, re remember to clean out that brush. Now this technique works very well for doing um, a faux bois or a wood graining as well. So if you have um, a deep yellow or a deep orange base and you're working with uh, wood tones over top, it works beautifully. So I think we're ready for another coat. Remember, slight overlap. Try not to have too wide an overlap. Makes it more difficult to get rid of the lap lines. And you also apply your glaze in, in spaces that are easy to control. You don't want to have the glaze, the glaze drying on you while you're trying to get this, this stria technique done. I've got a little bit of a lap line, so I'm going to turn the brush on its chisel edge and pull through the lap line just to hide that. I'll come back, pull the stria through, now I've got one more section to do, and then I'll show you the next step, and it's actually a very simple one. All right, we're down to the last little section. Doesn't take very long, does it? So I'll pull it along. Now the reason I keep working into this is that uh, what happens with the glaze is it has a little bit of a tendency to rest or soften up, and then the stria gets a little ill-defined. So what we want to do is, by constantly coming back and interfering with that glaze, it just simply reintroduces all of those stria. I love this effect. It's so pretty. And it's such a simple one to do. So, now that we've got the whole floor cloth um, done, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so that you can get a better look at the stria. Do you see? right there. So we have this nice vertical uh, line appearing in this pattern. Well, and that's wonderful, but now we have to create that sort of weave look. And that is done very simply by pulling the brush horizontally through that weave. But this is a much lighter touch. And the idea is to simply disturb the glaze a little bit. And this is what gives it a slight and light fabric appearance. And we'll continue it on the other side. Now by working this light colored glaze over top of that black lettering, it helps retain that sort of distressed appearance as if this had been stamped and lettered years and years ago and then gradually the color has worn away. So, there you have it. This is a faux sackcloth or a faux linen sackcloth. All done using the Palmer. Thanks, I'm glad you joined me today. Get yourself one of these, try it out. This is a great technique. It's very simple and it looks great in your home. Thank you.